Okay guys, so I'm not exactly sure where, what the uh, detailed plan is, but I'm gonna try to practice a moving rope system today. But I got my throw line thrown up over uh, that crotch. That's, nah, is it that one right there? Yeah, I think it's that one right there. Not that one, but that, uh, that one right there. So I'm gonna get my rope up there. So I got the throw line up there. I gotta put my rope and pull it over. Give me one second. All right, so I'm tying my rope to my throw line and this is how I do it. At the end of my throw line, I have a loop tied already, but you don't need one. You could just take the end of your line, right? Put a, put a, a little loop on it and stick the rope through there. And when you pull it, it creates like a little half hitch, okay? Or a noose or however you wanna word it. So again, do it again, you flip it, okay? And you put it on top of the rope and you pull it and it creates all these little half hitches. And I put it down about a foot and a half, okay? So when I pull this up, it is not coming undone. So, one. That one. All right, I'm gonna pull the rope up. Here it goes, shine it up in the tree. And watch it go up, up and away. Okay. And then when it gets right to about the branch, I just get a little, a little pop, and it gets right over. I just stick two hands up if you want me to pause it. Okay, Dad? Yep. Yeah. And always, once I get my rope over and I get it back in my hand, I will take my gloves off and untie it, which is very simple. You just kind of slide it down. You could do like that and slide it all down and mm -hmm. just pull it right off. All right, you can pause it now. Good? Yeah. So now I'm going to roll up my, uh, my throw line, which I just bought this from the Home Depot. It's actually Mason line, high visibility Mason line. It was about maybe five bucks, seven bucks, and it works perfectly. So I don't use it as it's meant to with this thing and roll it up like that. It's just way too difficult and it doesn't seem to line up. But I just roll it up like that. Your fingers, right if you want to pause it. I think I'm on. Okay, good. You can pause that. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the way that I get my rope anchored up there around the crotch, okay, so I don't have to tie a base anchor, is I take the, uh, the dead end of the rope. Okay, this is going to be my climbing line, which is the short end. Okay, shine down here. See, this end pretty much has like just a couple feet. This uh -huh. end is the rest of the rope. It has about 40 feet. So this is going to be the dead end. So, so what I do is... I'll get that. Oh, look, over here. So what I do is I take a bite. See, please report what I'm doing, okay? I take a bite, and I'm going to tie myself a figure of eight. Okay, just like that. All right. Then yeah. I'll take my climbing end, and I'll stick my climbing end through here. All right, and what that does is now it allows me to pull this up into the tree. Shine it. Okay, pulls this all the way up into the tree. And it, That's really high, Dad. It locks off around the oh. branch. Okay. Oh, you guys. Now we're have locked to off. See. Okay. Now you don't want to confuse the two ropes. Well, it's one rope, but the two lines. This is going to be the one we're not climbing on, so I want to wrap this one up, okay? So I tie it off like this and throw it against the back side of the tree or whatever, just let it hang there so I don't get the two ends confused. So now that's the climbing end, the side she's climbing on. <laughs> and always, before you climb up that rope into the tree, always wait on it. Like, put your body weight on it, jump around. Um, make sure it's definitely strong enough to hold you. You know, check out the uh, the tree. See if the tree is strong enough to hold you. I mean, this is a pretty thick tree. It's been here for a long time. Well, I've been here for 15 years, so I've been chopping branches off on it. I intend to take down most of this tree, if not all of it, eventually. Um, I'm also trying to learn about trees as well and how to prune properly and not leave big pieces of... Uh, you know, notch cuts like that. I, I learned that that's the incorrect way to cut a branch and to leave a big stem like that. You're supposed to cut it pretty much close to the tree. Like let's say for instance, we're trying to cut down 
this, you would cut it all the way against the tree and put it like almost the same angle as the tree. You don't want a straight flat cut like that. You want it to go like that, I guess, as close to the tree as possible. All things I have to learn. So this is my harness. It's a, it's a monkey beaver harness. I just got it. It's my second harness that I've owned. I've only been doing the tree work for less than a year. Um, I've learned so much in that year period. There's still so much more I have to learn. Uh, this harness actually seems to work very well. It's pretty comfortable. I've also got this uh, tool transporter, rock exotica transporter. Got a notch, uh, tree saw, and I got a bunch of things on here. I got two flip lines. One's a wire core. The other one's just a rope. I think both of them are either 8 feet or 10 feet long. So I'm just going to up, hook myself up to this rope real quick with my uh, Rope Runner Pro. And just put some weight on the rope just to make sure that I'm good to climb up it. This is my Rope Runner Pro that I bought. It actually goes this way. So it looks like this when you have it attached. Okay, and that carabiner goes to your harness, to your uh, your attachment point. And uh, this is called the bird up here. And you have your uh, your bollard, which uh, creates the friction. And actually is already smoothed out, so it actually is very nice. This actually works out very well. Uh, I'm trying to learn how to do moving rope system with this thing, but I think it was really designed for a single rope uh, technique or non-moving rope technique. I also use a lot this uh, foot ascender. It's a notch foot ascender. You could go on either foot, left or right, doesn't matter. Um, they say they don't recommend you to try to use this over your spikes, but I also have these, uh, these notch gecko steel spikes. They're about uh, almost 300 bucks. Uh, they work very well. I find to, they work very well. The only thing I have issues with is I have flat feet. So I notice when I'm climbing with them, uh, especially in the wintertime, when I spike into a tree, uh, and I'm only spiking in trees that are in my own personal yard, on trees that I'm going to actually take down. I try not to spike into the trees because I found that uh, it actually can cause damage to the tree and uh, eventually uh, infect the tree if bugs get in it or uh, other things of that nature. I'm trying to learn as much as possible about trees because I do want to... Uh, expand my knowledge as much as possible to become the tree expert I want to be. Also, uh, I just bought today um, the, the Haas knee ascender. Because um, right now, the way I was ascending the rope with the notch foot ascender and the, the rope runner pro is I would have to uh, push up on the foot ascender and then raise up the rope runner pro and then sit down into the rope runner pro, let that catch and lift my leg up again and then push up and then it's a repetitive up and down, up and down, sit down, stand, sit down, stand. But now that I have the, the knee ascender, which I'm going to open and try to install and use, now I could rope walk and it'll actually look like I'm walking right up the rope. I, don't, I would take out that whole step of having to sit down.